The photoelectric effect, the Nobel-winning proof, light is a particle. What if light is not a gentle, continuous wave, but a relentless barrage of microscopic, indivisible bullets of pure energy? And what if the very color of that light determines the precise power of each individual bullet, a secret that, once unlocked, would shatter a century of established scientific consensus, resolve a deep and troubling paradox, and ultimately hand Albert Einstein the Nobel Prize for an idea even more radical than his theory of relativity. This is the story of the photoelectric effect, a seemingly obscure laboratory phenomenon that became the crucible in which the quantum revolution was truly forged. It is a tale not of abstract thought experiments, but of a stubborn physical fact that refused to align with the elegant wave theory of light. It was a whisper from the world of metals and electrons that revealed a truth about the universe that was far more granular, far more violent, and far more fundamentally strange than anyone was prepared to accept. It was the moment that the quantum, once a mathematical ghost, became undeniably real. To understand the depth of the crisis the photoelectric effect created, we must first appreciate the serene, settled dogma of late 19th century physics. The Great War over the nature of light was believed to be over. Thomas Young's double slit experiment in 1801 had demonstrated the unmistakable interference pattern of waves and James Clerk Maxwell's magnificent equations in the 1860s had mathematically unified electricity and magnetism, proving that light was an electromagnetic wave. The case was closed. Light was a wave, a smooth, continuous disturbance spreading through space-time. In this wave picture, the energy of light was related to its amplitude, or its intensity, a brighter light was simply a bigger, more powerful wave. A dim light was a smaller, weaker one. This was a complete, elegant, and seemingly unassailable theory. But as scientists in the late 19th century began experimenting with shining light on metal surfaces in a vacuum, they discovered a phenomenon that this beautiful theory simply could not explain. They observed that when light, particularly ultraviolet light, struck a metal plate, it would cause the plate to eject electrons, creating an electrical current. This itself was not a complete surprise. One could imagine a continuous wave of light eventually transferring enough energy to an electron to knock it loose from its atom. The mystery, however, lay in the precise details of this interaction. First, there was the intensity problem. According to wave theory, a brighter, more intense light wave should carry more energy per second and therefore should knock out electrons with greater kinetic energy, making them fly off faster. But experiments showed that this was not true. A brighter light only ejected more electrons, not higher energy ones. The speed of the ejected electrons was completely independent of the light's intensity. Second, there was the frequency problem. The maximum kinetic energy of the electrons was instead solely determined by the frequency, or the color, of the light. A dim blue light would eject electrons that moved faster than those ejected by an intensely bright red light. Third, and perhaps most puzzling, was the threshold frequency. For each specific metal, there existed a certain minimum cutoff frequency. If the light's frequency was below this threshold, no electrons would be ejected at all, no matter how bright the light was or how long you shined it on the metal. A blindingly bright red light might do absolutely nothing, while the faintest glimmer of ultraviolet light could instantly produce a current. The classical wave theory was utterly powerless to explain these facts. It was as if the electrons were not slowly absorbing energy from a continuous wave, but were being knocked out in a series of one-on-one -on -one collisions. The first whisper of a solution did not come from the study of light, but from the study of heat. In 1900, the German physicist Max Planck was wrestling with a different theoretical problem known as the ultraviolet collapse. 
the failure of classical physics to correctly predict the spectrum of radiation emitted by a hot object. In what he later called an act of desperation, Planck found he could make the mathematics work if he introduced a radical, ad hoc assumption. He proposed that energy was not emitted or absorbed as a continuous flow, but only in discrete, individual packets, which he called quanta. The energy of each quantum, he proposed, was directly proportional to the frequency of the radiation, a relationship governed by a new fundamental number he introduced, now known as Planck's constant, H. Planck himself was deeply unsettled by his own idea, viewing it as a mere mathematical contrivance, a temporary fix with no deep physical meaning. He had introduced the quantum, but he did not yet believe in it. It took the audacious genius of a young Albert Einstein during his miracle year of 1905 to see the profound physical reality hiding in Planck's mathematical trick. Einstein took Planck's idea and made a breathtakingly bold claim. The quantization was not just in the emission or absorption of energy, it was a fundamental property of light itself. Light, Einstein argued, does not travel as a continuous wave at all. It travels through space as a stream of these discrete energy packets. He called them light quanta, though we now know them by the name of photons. He was, in essence, resurrecting Newton's particle theory of light, but imbuing it with the new quantum rules of Planck. This particle model provided a stunningly simple and elegant explanation for every single mystery of the photoelectric effect. In Einstein's model, the process is a series of one-on-one -on -one collisions. A single electron is knocked loose by a single indivisible photon. The brightness of the light is simply the number of photons in the stream. A brighter night means more photons per second, which explains why it knocks out more electrons but doesn't change the energy of each individual collision. The energy of each photon bullet is determined solely by its frequency, E equals HF, just as Planck had proposed. A blue light photon is a high energy bullet. A red light photon is a low energy one. When a photon strikes an electron, it transfers all of its energy in that single instant. A certain amount of that energy is used by the electron to break free from the attractive forces holding it to the metal, an amount called the work function, which is different for every metal. Whatever energy is left over becomes the electron's kinetic energy, determining how fast it flies off. This perfectly explains why blue light ejects faster electrons than red light. Finally, the threshold frequency is explained with beautiful simplicity. It is the minimum frequency and thus minimum energy a single photon must have to overcome the metal's work function. If an incoming photon has less energy than this, it simply doesn't have enough power to free an electron. It doesn't matter if you fire a billion of these low-energy photons at the metal, since each interaction is one-on-one, -on -one, none of them will succeed. It's like trying to knock down a wall by throwing a million ping-pong balls at it. What you need is a single cannonball. Despite its explanatory power, Einstein's proposal was seen as deeply heretical by the physics community of the time. The evidence for the wave nature of light from interference and diffraction experiments was overwhelming. To suggest that light was also a particle seemed like a giant leap backward. For over a decade, the idea was met with intense skepticism. The great experimentalist Robert Millikan spent 10 years conducting painstaking experiments to disprove Einstein's photoelectric equation, only to find that his results confirmed it with incredible precision in 1915, though he himself remained unconvinced of the physical reality of photons. It was only after the discovery of other particle-like behaviors of light, such as the Compton effect in 1923, that the scientific community finally, reluctantly, began to accept the idea. In 1921, Albert Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics, 
not for his more famous and abstract theories of relativity, but specifically for his services to theoretical physics and especially for his discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect. It was an idea so revolutionary, yet so directly and irrefutably proven by experiment that it could no longer be ignored. The photoelectric effect is far more than just a historical experiment. It marks a pivotal moment in our understanding of the cosmos. It was the definitive proof that energy is not a smooth, continuous fluid, but is quantized, existing only in discrete packets. It was the birth of the photon as a real physical entity, the fundamental particle of light and force. And most importantly, it was the first irrefutable piece of evidence for the bizarre, paradoxical, and foundational truth of wave-particle duality. It proved that light, a phenomenon that behaved so perfectly like a wave, must also, under other circumstances, behave like a particle. It was a discovery that shattered the clean, binary logic of classical physics and forced humanity to accept a reality that could be two contradictory things at once. The whisper from this simple experiment is that the smooth, continuous world of our senses is an illusion, and that at its heart, the universe is grainy, discrete, and profoundly quantum. Did this journey into Einstein's Nobel-winning discovery change how you see a simple beam of light? Like this video if you are fascinated by the birth of the photon. Share it with anyone who loves the history of great scientific ideas and comment below which is more fundamental, the particle or the wave?